Hey, welcome back. Business 163, Personal Finance. This is now video number two in our module on credit and debt. And uh, let me just tell you right up front, this is probably going to be the longest video in this particular module because we're talking about a pretty big topic, your credit history and credit score. And we're going to chat about uh, some examples, several examples at the tail end of this lecture about uh, what happens to your credit score with certain types of events. And so I want to make sure that we actually give you some practical real life examples of how certain decisions or choices affect our credit score uh, very, very quickly. All right. So let's climb into this particular video. As you can tell from the title slide, we are talking about credit history and credit score. Uh, they are not the same thing, but they are very, very closely related. So let's get started. All righty. What is your credit history? Your credit history is simply your history, specifically your history of borrowing and repayment over time. So therefore, your credit history is a record of your borrowing and repayment experience and activity over time. For example, your credit history includes how many credit cards or loans you have, have had in the past, currently have now, and whether you've paid your bills on time or not. You really should, on a very regular basis, get a copy of your credit report, confirm that what's reported in your credit history is accurate. Because quite frankly, while they try to be as accurate as possible, credit repositories do occasionally make mistakes. And sometimes those mistakes can really injure us. We want to make sure that we are checking our credit history on a regular basis. Credit history is important because of one big realization we've made about human behavior. And that is, your demonstrated history repaying your debts is the most accurate predictor of how you will treat debt in the future. It really is. Credit history is the most highly correlated demonstration. Uh, it is the closest barometer or predictor of how a person will treat debt in the future. Now, that's not to say that once we get locked into a set of behaviors uh, that we are stuck there. People can change. But quite frankly, we've already talked about how difficult it is for us to change our financial habits, right? So without an enormous amount of effort to change our habits, either good or bad, generally speaking, your past history about treating your finances and debt, it really is the best predictor of how you'll treat your finances and debt in the near future. Alrighty, returning to the slide here. How do I check my credit history? Well, your credit history is detailed in a standard credit report. Therefore, you need to get a standard credit report. You should know that in the United States, there are three large credit bureau companies, also referred to sometimes as credit repositories, where all the information rests in a repository, right? Those three companies are Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax, respectively. And what happens here in the United States is that lenders can choose to report information to any or all of these three companies. And typically, most large lenders report to all three of these companies. Um, each of these companies has a credit report, and you can get a copy of your credit report from each of these three companies for free once a year. All you have to do is go to uh, on, the, on the web, www.annualcreditreport.com. You see it listed there. I'll also provide a link to, for you in the module. And uh, at once every 12 months, you can get a copy of your credit report, one copy from each of the three repositories. Uh, and you should get that once a year and review it. Now, notice that the last bullet point, the credit report that you get from annualcreditreport.com will not include a credit score. It'll be just your report. And that will give you plenty of information to go over carefully and confirm that it's accurate. But we'll talk about credit cards in a later video. Many credit card companies these days want you to be monitoring your credit, your credit history, and your credit score 
So many credit card companies will now give you your credit, your latest uh, current credit score for free over the internet. So we'll talk about that a little bit more when we hit that video specifically on credit cards. Now, when you get your credit report, what should you look for? You should be aware that every credit report has two main sections. The top section is basically all of your personal information. You should make sure it's accurate. The second part is the very long record of your past credit and debt history. All the companies that you've had a loan or a credit card or a car loan or any kind of transaction with, as well as uh, a month by month uh, record of your payments, whether those payments were made on time or whether they weren't. What you should you do? You should carefully check every page to make sure it's accurate. Make sure each of the loans and accounts listed is really yours and that the repayment record is accurate. If you find errors, take steps to have them corrected. We don't take a great deal of time in the module uh, to talk specifically how to appeal to the credit repositories to have errors uh, corrected, but plenty of information on that resides uh, on the internet. Uh, you can just go to the websites for Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax, and they have uh, very, very specific and accurate information how to appeal to them to um, uh, correct errors in your credit history. All right. Now, related to your credit history, your credit report, is the credit score. What is a credit score? Well, as you might guess, it's a numeric distillation of your entire credit history. It looks at your entire credit history and assigns a numeric score. What sometimes people don't realize, though, is that we don't have just one score floating around. We have many scores because each of the three bureaus prepares industry-specific scores for different types of lenders. So, for instance, um, Equifax prepares a auto lender score that's specifically designed for automobile lenders. There are uh, mortgage scores specifically for mortgage lenders. So we all have a whole bunch of actually, you know, several different scores floating around out there. And each of the three bureaus has several different algorithms to develop a score, and they continue to adjust and modify their algorithms and models over time. But for the sake of ease of this class in this module, let's put it this way. The major score that we should all pay attention to is known as the FICO score, also known as FICO score 8. Why are we looking primarily at FICO score 8? It is right now the most popular score that lenders use. Um, and it becomes easier for us to focus on that because it is the one that generally is most popular with lenders. Now, how should we understand this score? Well, as we said, most lenders use FICO score 8, and the score that you have from any point in time can range from the lowest score of 300 to the highest score of 850. And generally speaking, you can sort of see how these categories work themselves out. Right now, the average U.S. average credit score in uh, the United States is 710. That's a little bit higher than it was last year, and you can you know, track that over the time if you're interested. But more importantly, what you need to know is wherever your score is, generally speaking, a score of 800 to 850 is known as exceptional. Um, you can see the ratings there from 740 to 799 is known as very good. Your score between 670 and 739 is known as a good credit score. And then you can see the ratings for fair and poor. So whenever you are able to get a copy of your FICO score, you should understand what that implies about your overall assessment of your credit history, right? And if you don't fall into one of the higher ranges, if perhaps your credit score is a little lower than the very good or good range, do not be discouraged. Just realize there are things that you can start doing immediately to improve your credit score. And quite frankly, it's probably pretty important that you get to work on that. And that's why we're in this class, to help to explain to you what kinds of things will affect your credit score 
and how do you manage that? So let's first talk about what doesn't affect your credit score ever. By law, these things can never affect your credit score. Your race, color, religion, national origin, sex, marital status, if at any point in time a person has received public assistance, if you are exercising any of your consumer rights under the Consumer Credit Protection Act, your age, your salary, your job, your title, your employer, how long you've been employed, where you live, if lenders initiate an inquiry into your credit, in other words, not because you've applied for a new credit card, just because they're perhaps thinking about offering you um, a, a new offer or something like that. None of those things will affect your credit score, okay? Now, that while that's encouraging, I realize you're probably asking the next question, well then what does affect my credit score? Here are the five factors that affect your credit score uh, on a monthly basis. Your payment history, the amount you actually owe relative to the maximum available credit limit that a credit card might offer to you. How long you've had credit accounts open, the length of your credit history, the credit age. The mixture of types of credit you have, and primarily that refers to revolving credit, like credit cards, versus installment loans, like mortgages and auto loans. And finally, new credit accounts. Have you opened up new credit accounts in the last month, or have you applied for them and therefore these lenders are inquiring into your credit? And you can see there not only the five categories of things that affect your credit score, but the percentage that each one of them will affect your score. So you can see there, your payment history affects your credit score significantly more than the balance between consumer credit and installment loans, right? Payment history affects your, your um, credit score 35%, whereas credit mix only influences the score 10%, right? So that should begin to give you a hint on what we're going to suggest to you about how to properly manage your credit. So let's talk about how particular events might affect your credit. Let's say that you're brand new to credit and you start with a score of 599. You know that 599 is not a great score, but you're just starting out. But in just starting out, you miss one credit card payment. How much will that hurt your score? Well, quite frankly, if you have a score of 599 and you're new to credit, missing one credit card payment will drop your credit score 131 points all the way down to 468. The combination of you being new to credit and missing a payment makes you lose over 130 points to your credit score. That is a significant uh, detriment. All right, let's give you another example. Let's say you have had a long credit history. After years of using your available credit very sparingly, you now have a credit score of 826. That's one of the highest credit scores in all these examples. How many points will you lose if all of a sudden you decide, I'm just going to max out all my credit cards? You can see there, your score drops a whopping 165 points, drops you all the way out of the exemplary range down to 661. Even if you continue to pay all your payments on time, high utilization is a very quick way to a lower score. Because of course, credit utilization affects your credit score at 30% of the influence, right? All right, let's keep going. Another example. Let's say you start with a credit score of 599 and you have the opportunity to pay down your credit card to just 10% of your credit limit, okay? So maybe you had a larger balance, but all of a sudden maybe someone has uh, give, gifted you some money or you got a big bonus at work or something, but you're going to pay down your credit card balance to just 10% of the available credit limit. How much will that improve your score? You see there, your score gains 96 points, improving all the way from 599 to 695. This is a very large gain, pushing you to a brand new credit tier. This is a great thing, right? Now, let's take a very similar scenario. Let's say you start with the same credit score, 599, but instead of paying it off entirely, 
you pay it off entirely and close the account. You call up the lender and say, I don't want this credit card anymore. I'm closing it. How much will that improve your score? Well, your score only increases 10 points to 609. Now look at this, look carefully at that last bullet point. If you had paid it off and kept the card open, your score would have increased 103 points. But by closing it, and that, if that was your only credit card, it hurts you both in terms of your mix of credit, because now you've dropped off all your consumer credit, right? You've closed it, and you have lowered the amount of the available credit to you. That's why you only gain 10 points. And immediately here, you sort of can probably guess what the correct answer is. Rather than paying it off entirely and closing it, what if you paid the card off entirely, all the way to a zero balance, but kept the account open and just took that card and maybe put it in your sock drawer, okay? So you don't use it anymore, but you keep the account open. You would have, your credit score would have gained over 100 points rather than just 10. All right, let's keep going. Here's another example. Let's say, again, you start with a credit score of 826, uh-oh, but you let one of your credit cards go off to collections. How much will that hurt your score? Your score drops a whopping 257 points all the way down to 569. Yeah, well, that really hurts when a company takes uh, a debt to collections. Uh, and finally, let's say you have a good score. You have a 732, 732 credit score, but you declare bankruptcy. Well, a bankruptcy really hurts. It'll drop your score 363 points. I think that's the largest drop in any of these examples, all the way down to 369. And of course, depending on the type of bankruptcy you declare, that will, that may stay on your record for 10 years. All right. Now, that doesn't mean your credit score will stay at 369 for 10 years, but the record of your bankruptcy will stay on your credit report for up to 10 years, depending on what chapter you file of the bankruptcy code. All righty. So these are just some quick examples to tell you what. Well, your credit history and credit score are incredibly important to your financial life. And different events will affect your credit score differently depending what score you started with, how long you've been using credit, and the type of account that we're talking about. The bottom line is, one of the most important things you can manage in your financial life is your credit history and your credit score. We highly recommend you regularly check your credit report and you find a way to actively manage your credit score on a monthly basis. Keep track of it on a monthly basis, track the changes so that you know when your credit score goes up or if something affects it and it goes down, that's the best way to know how to take the next appropriate steps to keep your credit score increasing. I hope that's helpful. You have some supplementary videos and articles to also um, um, amend and add to this knowledge. I hope this is really helpful. Again, one of the most important parts of this module, your credit history and your credit score. Thanks so much. We'll see you in the next video.